Welcome to Flight Brothers FT, produced by Tim and Lee. Plan the flight and fly the plan. All charts courtesy of Navigraph Charts, not to be used for real-world navigation. Be sure to subscribe and explore the rest of the channel for high-quality aviation content and entertainment. Welcome to Episode 7 of the Flight Brothers FT Podcast, recorded on January 29th, 2021. In this episode, goodbye to 2020, Happy New Year to 2021, and real life gets way too busy. I was probably supposed to cover that, wasn't I? Oh, <laughs> oh well, we're a little rusty. If you enjoy this content, please click like and subscribe and ring the bell for all of our notifications. If you are new to our podcast format, welcome. And for our returning subscribers, welcome back. And for those of you tuning in now, we have video, hopefully, so you get to stare at my ugly face until we can get Tim's ugly face on also. <laughs> we just wanted to ease your toes in to the water with Lee's face. Right. I'm unshaven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's I'm real ruffian right now. All right. Well, as always, you know, we've got to plug ourselves here. So if you are interested in supporting this podcast or our channel, or perhaps if you produce flight simulation peripherals or some software, or maybe you just have some product information that you would like to share with us or the community, you can always contact us over at flightbrosft at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on social media, go to facebook.com slash flightbrothersft and also on Instagram, Twitter, and now Reddit at flightft2019. And uh, I must say we maintain a pretty good Instagram and a growing Reddit and occasionally even get those posts out to Twitter. I largely do nothing with any of that, but Tim keeps it rocking, so that's good. Thanks for doing that, Tim. Daily, sir. That, that's Daily it. on the gram. That's right. Hey, so for those of you who are tuning in, well, actually, we're posting this, so it's not really your fault. It's ours. So this is our November 1 to January 2021 edition. Uh, we kind of took a break. Things got a little busy, so uh, we stepped back a little bit, and um, we're jumping back into it. So uh, we'll go ahead with product announcements. Some of this stuff is older um I, i've tried clearing some of it out so that it's still relevant but uh flight factor uh for x plane here so, uh, flight factor is doing the 787 pro right on and uh in some of our other links because uh, lee's attempting to get this out so hopefully you're seeing it as we're looking at it but there are screenshots where the textures have already been overlaid on this model those are further later down. in this list yeah yeah so uh so it's it's seen a little more work since then but uh how, how are you feeling about this lee is this going to be an addition to your flight factor fleet oh yeah yeah Arm it's twister yeah it'll it'll go right there with the a320 that i hardly fly but the 75 and 76 love their stuff and uh yeah i could do with another a, a modern boeing Right, and uh, a recent addition that happened in our relative hiatus, I uh, picked up, or I guess I, I believe I was gifted, the Flight Factor 777, which um, I'd held off on that forever, but uh, I, I was it was love at first flight. I mean, I just, I flew that more than anything else in the last three months, and I did it within a period of about three days. I really liked it, even though uh, its texturing was a bit dated and whatnot. It, uh, I found it just as enjoyable as their uh, 757767. So I have the same high level of expectation for this Dreamliner. And there's, uh, maybe we'll get to it later, but uh, maybe we can skip over it. But I think they are still doing work on V2s for possibly rumored the 777 as well. So uh, that'll bring that well, one up to uh, current standard. Believe, believe that one when I see it. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's been so much buzz about it that I had held off. And now I, I, once I got it, I was kicking myself like, oh, I should have got it a long time ago. Right. Yeah, it wasn't as bad as a lot of the 
criticism that uh, w would lead you to believe. Is that right? I, I don't have it, but I know you flew it for a while there. Yeah, it, it really just boiled down to the textures are a step behind all of their other stuff. And, but once I started operating it, I mean, uh, it, it's usually not the textures you die on. It's the FMC. And that, as with the other flight factors, is pretty bulletproof. So, sure. good times. Yep. And uh, sorry, as I show some of these to you, it looks like I've managed to show our podcast notes at least once here. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to do this. So on to the next one, the uh, Innovilds A300, of course. Uh, we did a review for that over on FS Elite. So if you'd like to see that, go check that out. But uh, they're releasing the A300 Beluga ST. Isn't that just amazing? They're going to town. Uh uh, further down this list, they've got the uh, 310 coming out. So it's, I'm actually pleased to see that they're cashing in on all these variants because if they hadn't, you know everybody who loves it would have been asking for it anyway. So I'm glad they uh, headed that one off the pass and we've got these fantastic ones. And, and I got to admit, I don't want this, but I have a serious curiosity to see what it flies like. Yeah, I'd imagine the cruise speed's a little uh, slower. Well, even just, um, you know, like what's the max bank angle on something that's that high profile? <laughs> it should still be the same. I mean, you're going to have more drag, right? Because you got more frontal area and all that. But I mean, other than when it's, how much can it actually carry, you know, over a regular one, right? Well, that's, that, that is a very good point because it's cargo is um, another cross sections, plane. right? Yeah, yeah. The uh, bodies for, uh, what does this carry? The body for uh, 330s, 340s? I think so. I mean, who knows? Maybe they contract it out too. Like what is the dream lifter? You know, it uh, moves that stuff around. I, and I, I don't know if they contract that out as well. I think that's Atlas, isn't it? Isn't that who flies that also? Ooh, the dream lifter is that through Atlas? That's a very good question. Yeah, um, I, I believe that's reasonably true. Believe seven didn't seven four gear get to fly the dream lifter? Wasn't he on yeah. the dream lifter for a while? Yep. Yeah, I don't. Uh, but, I don't think he said yeah. who he flies for, but he says sometimes he flies passengers, sometimes he flies cargo, and he uh, mostly flies cargo, and he's flown the dream lifter, and I'm pretty sure that's all an Atlas contract. Oh, there you go. Giants all the way. Perfect. Yep. Well, so nonetheless, we've got uh, a very unique variant coming out, and uh, the the regular 300 has been super well received by everyone. Uh, we loved it. So, uh, yeah. actually, you know what would be really curious is if they did interior modeling. Now I'm getting more curious by the moment. Interior modeling on the Beluga? Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, to be fair, they had the cargo version, then they dropped the passenger version with interior modeling. Uh, we'll get to that more. That was a subsequent update as well that came out while mm -hmm. we were non-podcasting. Um, so I would not be surprised. I, I think, uh, or sorry, it's not in a built, it's I and I built, right? Um, you know, they jumped in and they're, in my opinion, are quickly becoming a standard. <laughs> Well, interestingly enough, our next uh, topic is still right on with uh, this aircraft's development. I, I mentioned a moment ago, the uh, A310 variant is coming out, and we've got a note here. I, I don't see an article uh, verifying it, but I, I trust Lee's got the right data. Uh, the 310 variant will be offered to existing A300 customers at a 35% discount, yeah. which... Uh, I found that generous because the um, the 310 is only 15% shorter than the A300. So and you're getting it for 35% off. So, 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 so you're getting an extra 25%? <laughs> is that what you're trying to make the point? You're getting an extra 20% off. Just right. think of the savings. Think of the savings. There you go. You can put it into the fuel tank for the gas you're not paying for. Hashtag math. Virtual fuel. It burns. Well, and I don't remember where I saw that, but um, 
there was, I think, a discount also going the other way, but it was less of a discount. So I think it was if you buy the A310, you can get the A300 for a, a smaller percentage off than the 35. And I can't remember if that was INI builds or FS Elite, but I, I saw that somewhere out there on the interwebs. Fantastic. Yeah, that's good, good stuff. Good stuff. Quality products. Um, and neat aircraft. Actually, I've never been on either. Have you ever been on any, uh, on a 300 or a 310? No, only a 320. See, I've been on a 320 as well. Three, all of the 320 variants, I suspect, sure. except for the 18, I probably have been on. But, um, I've been on the 330 as well. I, I, I'm assuming I'll never get on a 340 because uh, is anybody even flying that anymore? Uh, yeah, I don't know anymore. Long live the four engines. <laughs> if there's any left by the end of 2021. What's surprising is they killed the trijets before the quads, right? <laughs> Strange but true. Yeah, at least in uh, passenger service. Yep, yep. Hey, so... Uh, I was skimming through our last podcast that we had a while back, and we mentioned the Thranda Beaver. It has uh, obviously been released by now. I can't remember if it was released uh, in our last podcast, but they, they Simcoders, released their reality expansion pack, and it now has uh, the Thranda Beaver version 1.1.1. They've added floats, so now you can have your wet beaver. Yes. And I will try to pull that up here as well for our viewers. Uh, without screwing this up, we will see. All right. Well, while Lee finds the wet beaver for you, um, uh, at some point I gotta, I, I gotta drop the cash and pick this thing up. Uh, the uh, only time I've been in a float plane was a De Havilland uh, beaver and. I still have pictures of it. I video from it. Flew around in Alaska, and um, yeah, you went whale fantastic. watching, right? But there were no whales. We did actually. You know, I, I this will come as no shock to you. The highlight of the trip for me was the float plane. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Whales. I, it, I was on a De Havilland Beaver. I don't care about a whale. <laughs> and, and you can't see this, Tim. But what I have up actually is the uh, explain.org forums uh, change log. So if you want to go look at the aircraft, sorry, I don't have the link for that. Go to your favorite uh, Thranda retailer out there. And, and you know, I, I, have, I have that DA-62 by them. Love it. Um, and I think I have another aircraft that it's, it's designed or made by Thranda, but it's not marketed as it. It might be like a Carinado or something. But love that plane too, man. So, hey, you know... Go ahead. Oh, oh, go ahead. I, I just have a random thought. No, I was just going to say I'm I'm quickly becoming, especially with the GA, uh, Thranda and V Flight Air are two of my favorite devs because I have two or three products of each, and all of mm -hmm. them are way better than I anticipated them to be. Well, you see, you're you're kind of hitting on an interesting topic. I was thinking we we've discussed this. I suspect off air numerous times and possibly in a podcast mm -hmm. ga planes are smaller exponentially smaller so the amount of texturing the amount of development the amount of systems it's all much more limited and i don't mean that to sound like a slam against these developers at ga it's not it's just just what it is but i think as a benefit to the flight simmer your odds of picking up a ga payware that's just spot on fantastic it's actually pretty high sure whereas in the airliner segment you're going to be dropping uh 50 to 80 dollars and uh opinions will vary widely as to whether or not it's accurate enough to the real one which is because we're all always... yeah we're all rated pilots <laughs> type rated yeah <laughs> this is something tim and i go back and forth all the time so right uh we're fairly well, easy we're, to please, right? I mean, we, we have expectations, fair. but I mean, geez. Right. I mean, yeah, it just, uh, we're not high maintenance, I guess. Sure. In that category. 
Hey, Tim, can you double check me there? I know uh, we're kind of swinging along here. Uh, you, we had about 14, 15, 14, 30 minutes. Is that right? All right. Lee likes to time check me because he knows I'll talk forever. And I got us at 14, 46 and counting, sir. Okay. I just want to double check that my time's matching yours because I don't know if that's going to be up on the raw video. So. All right. So for those of you listening, you've you've just lost 14 minutes of your life, about 15 now that you won't get back. But if you go download some of these awesome products, you'll feel better about that time you lost. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't suppose just, you've already downloaded this next one, have you? Uh, no. And I keep clicking on the wrong thing. Apparently, when I open the window, it mm -hmm. uh, it comes up. I need to figure out how to do this better. Well, while you try and figure that out, how about I, uh, I jibber jabber about zero dollar paywares? Yeah, yeah. Soul Enchon International, RKSI. I'm showing. The, I'm showing it right now, by the way. Oh, sweet! In the IKO, I've I've been recently corrected by a person of of considerable note that it's not ICAL codes; it's IKO. Sure. Is that is that correct? Okay. Yeah, IKO. yeah. Uh, I've been through Inchon a couple of times. It's uh, I'm, try I'm trying to think how many of my transits to Asia bounced me through there, but uh, it's an epic airport. And if you've never sim f flown into it, like go do that right now. We'll finish watching our podcast first, so we get all the juicy ad revenue. But uh, then <laughs> boot it up. Yeah, those millions um, of dollars make them rain so we can buy two webcams. Yeah, we, we, we might get like an extra penny if you watch all of this. So if if I'm not mistaken, Lee, remember when we first got X-Plane 11? Mm -hmm. There were a number of noteworthy, serious, serious national and, capital Asian airports that had no scenery. Is this one of them? Uh, I don't know, but I think either Taipei and or Singapore were. And when I flew through there, I'm like, are you kidding me? a couple runways and some crappy tarmac okay yeah i, I think I, I remember yeah it was just a, a flat land there was nothing mm -hmm. but runway uh i think taipei was one of them uh okay. bangkok also nothing what so, and, uh savarna Bumi or whatever the, the big uh, one yeah they have the main airport and then um i don't remember if manila in the philippines was also non-existent or if i just found a better one and upgraded it um I think we got upgraded, but I think it was at least there in a basic sense because you told me about that. And uh, Okay, so it did have yeah. a default scenery of some sort. That's good. Yeah, but I believe Taipei was like runways, and here's roughly how you get there. But there were like no buildings, no structure, nothing. Yeah, it was, it was like, to my mind, literally unbelievable that that could have been left with no structures at all. Um, mm -hmm. So... Well, why I'm yammering about that is uh, getting this airport uh, at the price of free. <laughs> right. That's uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah and uh, I actually I, I've been through there. Um, been through there once, and I actually got to see behind security. That's a story I'll tell you at some other point. But that was. Uh, yeah, that was that was interesting. Um, they looked at your bags and they said, "Please, sir." Well, something in my help, bag looked uh, like something it wasn't. So, oh, but anyway, good times. You left the batteries in it. It was so. <laughs> yeah, not like that. And I'm gonna bring up real quick for our viewers. Let's see if this works. Yep. Okay, so this is the uh, zero dollar payware um, forum page here on explain.org. So you can go there and follow along with it. I checked it uh, before we went on air this evening, and it's obviously not out yet. So they're still working some beta stuff. So it is still in development. All righty. Good stuff. All right. You want to you want to uh, take the next one? Uh, let me kind of summarize this, guys, because there's a lot of. Microsoft's hit the scene. Um, we had on here at the back when we started this in like November, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator had had the Fly Tampa LAS had come out. Of course, I think a couple podcasts before, um, Fly Tampa had released the LAS for X Plane as well. Uh, Tim and I had some discussions back and forth about that. But 
quite frankly, when it comes to the scenery right now with MFS, it's so hot that there's been so many airports released. Like they're coming out probably one to two a week almost. So if you're a Microsoft okay. Flight Simulator um, uh, geek and that's your sim of choice, Tim and I are both in X-Plane and uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. So if that's your sim, go look. Uh, go look out there on the internet. Look through the uh, online store, through the game itself. If it's not out there, it's probably going to be soon. Well, and we're going to make this plug later too, but um, even for ourselves, the best source of information, go on over to fselite.net. Uh, you can get hooked up for notifications. We get notified. Uh, we do content produce for them, but you know we're also on the receiving end of information from them. And it really is, uh, I think every morning I wake up and there's published articles of yeah. New things for MFS. And then there's also the incoming feed from developers uh, to FS Elite that will, by the next day, be articles about what. So it's it's nonstop. Yeah. It's really an exciting time for uh, for Microsoft Flight Sim. Sure, sure. And fortunately, they haven't left the others behind either. The others, X-Plane and, of course, P3D having like V4 point whatever, 5. So, I mean, they're, they're still pushing through if you're one of those guys. Guys or girls, right. uh, gals. Sim person. Yes, a sim person. So, uh, also for Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, this was, what, an announcement too, right? We still in that section. I'm going to bring this up for our viewers. Yes, it worked. I think I got it figured out now. Um, and, of course, this is a link from FS Elite. Fly-by-wire simulation announces the... A380 from Microsoft Flight Simulator. How you feel about That's, that one, Tim? Oh, I feel like the Sim A380 is coming online just as the real one's probably about to step down. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, the whale jet <laughs> arrives a little late. No truer words have been spoken, sir. You know, um... I, I, my wife got to ride on one, um... I don't know. I'm curious. I, I feel like I need to be on one before they're out of service, which is probably a very limited time window. But Unless you're going through the uh, Middle East. Emirates will probably keep them around. Oh, yeah. Go read the news. The, Uh-oh. Mm, I don't know. I don't know how long they're going to have them. Fair so uh, I just I, I never found love for it. I think it's ugly. I think that's my real problem. Aircraft, generally speaking... They're, they're beautiful. Uh, one of our Instagram, I'm the one who maintains our Instagram. That's why I know this. Lee helps out with it, but he's handling Reddit. I'm handling Instagram. And uh, I've been conversing with a photographer who occasionally likes our uh, our content and this and that. And so I, got, I struck up a conversation with him because I clicked on his Instagram and it's um, fantastic photography of women. And... And it was just really interesting that the, the, the connection, you know, the, the concept of beauty and artisticness and aesthetic sure. is there. And, and so here's a guy who uh, semi-professionally is a photographer. I guess you could say professionally. He's making money. It's not his day job. He's an architect. Mm -hmm. uh, so somebody really has a, a mind for the engineering and the aesthetic. And, and then you get the A380. At least it's got engineering. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's true. I mean, if it if it wasn't simply just the biggest, I don't think anybody would have cared, right? Because <sighs> th there's so much uh, people are like, "Long live the Queen," and you know, the 747 and all that, and it's just like, uh, other than it being able to move six or eight hundred people in a high density <laughs> configuration. Um, and it, it, they didn't even build it as a cargo version, which Boeing did, which we can see is, see is still saving them, right? Because there's still 7478 <laughs> freighters. So I believe the word you're looking for is short-sighted. <laughs> well, yeah. A couple of uh, economic downturns didn't help either. 
Hey, just just for fun, since we're staring at, I, I assume we're still staring at the nose, the A380 there, right? Oh, no, they're either staring at me or looking away. Oh, okay. I, I right. had it up there. Uh, I, can, I can put it back up. Hold on. Well, just a, a random thought for the viewers, or, or you could pull it up if you want to oh, Wikipedia okay. it or something. L look at that nose that a, a mother could love, and mm -hmm. uh, Google the XC, X-Ray Charlie 99. It's a Convair product from 1947. Does it have like the same front end? Um, basically, it's the 1947 version of the whale jet hmm. based on the uh, E36 Peacemaker. Oh, but yeah, 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 I, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the other one we had? The uh, what is they called the was it the double? Was it not double guppy. It, it was like the two B29 fuses, strata lifter or something. Uh, Strato Liner? Maybe. Is that Strato Liner? Uh, it's the Boeing 3... Oh, you're killing me. You're well, I had the military me. version, too. Um, I'm, I'm removing this from the viewers. I don't I don't think they want to look at that anymore. It's a Strato Cruiser. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, enough about that one. You want to move on to the next one? Actually, let me take this one. We're moving on to product releases and for Microsoft Flight Simulators, the, I don't know if that's Rex or REX Weather Force 2020. That has come out. And I was actually looking at this the other day, Tim. I believe it, um, I've got a link for it. Let me, let me, let me talk and then I'll add that up there because I'm terrible at multitasking right now. Um, but I believe it takes like uh, eight or nine readings per hour of meteorological data. And it somehow pools the data from like NOAA and surrounding airports. So it makes right. your weather engine and Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, it makes the transitions smoother between them because you're getting more frequent updates of the weather data <laughs> from closer locations. All right. And, and this is for MFS. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that would be appreciated. Now, I haven't experienced a weather update in uh, Microsoft Flight Sim yet, but in X Plane, you get slapped sometimes when the uh, <laughs> when the new winds come in. Yeah, you you would swear you just lost a chunk of the rudder sometimes. Like whoa, sure, sure. Ah, you know, I'm thinking. Hopefully, Cal doesn't get upset with this. You know, because we're showing the FS, largely the FS Elite stuff. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't, but you know, there's some, there's some companies here getting some bonus, uh, bonus uh, exposure here to the four people that are watching this podcast. This dear Callum, we're reading the news. Yes. Out loud. I hope you don't mind. Right. And go right. like and subscribe. FSElite.net. Yeah, well, that plug's coming up. Don't don't uh, don't get there too soon. All right, back All to right. me. <laughs> All right. The uh, the next one, which I also did pick up there, Tim, was uh, Just Flight for Air or Just Flight's Air Hauler Two for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Of course, I have that now for this. We both have it for X Plane. Shameless plug again. We have our virtual airline, and we've got what fifty three, fifty four planes, and like four pilots, three of whom fly. <laughs> I like that stipulation. Three of whom fly. Well, All right. The, uh, well, the one guy joined us, and then he's he's never flown anything. Maybe he clicked on the wrong airline. Yeah, that was actually a little inexplicable. But um, yeah, I I think we have a very unique VA because a we have very little expectation of you. We'd just like you to get in the chat bar and be hilarious and chat with us, and maybe go fly an airplane. Um, but because Lee and I have two platforms and a rather it, – it's hard to imagine there's too many people that have an X-Plane hangar larger than our combined hangars. So as uh, we get those all dumped in, I mean, you could probably fly just about anything. I, I promise if you get on and join the VA and ask us, the odds are about – Eight out of ten, we're going to have what you want and can get it added for you. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I kind of, I think we got our X-Plane fleet 
mostly set up so I've been kind of grinding a little bit trying to get the uh, uh, Microsoft Flight Sim stuff so I don't remember if I've got an Airbus for us I think I'm finally stepping into the turbines so if you want to fly two or three hundred pounds of rubber dog excrement out of Hong Kong you can do that with us to quote Top Gun <laughs> or yeah, right so um you know, but we're working up to the bigger stuff. Uh, me being the only one running the um, Microsoft Flight Sim version, my fleet's a lot smaller, so um, my revenue in in that one is a lot lower than my uh, my X plane one. So, but I think we're getting there, Tim. That's ah, a good time. It's uh, you, you know, for those of you who ever get that feeling of like, oh, I want to sim, but I don't know what to do. It's a great way of gamifying the sim, or if you've ever watched, um, what is that, Ice Pilots uh, NWT? Yeah. It, you know, it's that... Which we have DC3. It, right, you got the flying aspect, or you can do the office aspect and be Mikey McBrien back there trying to hook up the routes and trade the commodities and, you know, so... so you can geek out on numerous different levels. So if you're still like, I don't know what air hauler is, we have, how many videos do we have of that now? Three, four, five? I think three to four. The last one I did was commodities. And then I think you had done the VA. Then we had a repo flight and an overview. So four. All right, so it's one of the topics we have spent the most time on, and that's no accident, everybody. It's a uh, it's really solid add-on, so check it out. Yeah, it's it's fun. And come join us. Fly for us once in a while or even not at all. We won't kick you out. <laughs> we'll just wonder, what's wrong with you that you don't fly? <laughs> yeah, mouse in your house, if you're listening, you're that guy. <laughs> all right, so... Um, now we're down to uh well we're we're back at airports um we've got st martin beach. yeah life's a beach I'll, I'll put this one up just because it's princess juliana um but again like i mentioned earlier you know there's a uh, cologne bon uh basel san jose barcelona and probably every other airport that you can think of has been coming out for microsoft flight sim and again, guys, we're not trying to gloss over that. It's just that it's nearly impossible to keep up. And um, yeah, overwhelming. Yeah. So let, let's hop down to the X plane uh, releases there. Tim, do you want to take that one? All right. We've got the Torque Sim SR20. I've got it loading up here. I don't know if you're seeing it from uh, Lee's end. Lee's Working actually on the one hosting the hardware, uh, being the. Oh, the evil, awful world of COVID. I'm in virtually on this. So we've got the Take Command Torque Sim SR20. And uh, am I right here, Lee? The whole idea of this series is they were really going for a level of realism that would be real, like... The, the customer was not for the avid flight sim geek, but perhaps for someone who's actually doing flight training. Yeah, to I be mean that kind of study level. It's definitely a study level. I, I mean, uh, I think this was nearly identical. I didn't pick the SR20 up. I have the SR22. I tried flying it not too long ago, and I couldn't hop in it in cold dark it. So uh, I forgot mm -hmm. it has actually the integrated checklist on the uh, Garmin. Uh, just escape me and then I didn't have time to deal with it but uh, this of course is the SR20 it was originally at launch uh, offered to a slight discount I think 10 or 15 bucks discounted if you were an SR22 customer um, we've talked before it's we've got plenty of planes and the hardest parts finding the time to enjoy them all now you said something interesting a moment ago it ties into the plenty of planes Hmm. You said you weren't able to just jump in and cold and dark it. Yeah. Now that doesn't happen very often. No, <laughs> and I'm I'm sure I missed something stupid, maybe priming the priming it or something. I mean, you know, and, and it has the integrated checklist in the Garmin, which a lot of them don't. Um, 
you know, we have actually on our VA the Hold My Beer SR22, which is right. a very good freeware product, and it does have some similarities uh, with the Torque Sim. But uh, yeah, the Torque Sims. If you're into Cirrus, I I don't think you can go wrong with this. It's a it's a good thing for as good as the free one is. It's a good thing they want all like super next level ultra ultra real. Um, and when we say real, it won't just be down to like, oh, slightly better procedures and all the buttons work. It's like the uh, engine data readings are going to be by the book. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and that's the level of realism that, I mean, it's, it's a layer of realism as a casual simmer you might not even notice was there because odds are you're not watching exhaust gas temperatures and as... I mean, you, you might be to an extent, sure, but you might not scrutinize. Well, you know, that's that's not the right reading. So that's that's where they went with it. Yeah, all they, right, they did. What, what do we got? Uh, what do we got next here from Mango Studios? This one's for you. Okay, uh, I'm going to copy and paste this for our audience. It is the uh, was it a uh, Flight Factor A350 Sound Enhancement Package. Um, I don't have that actually. The uh, that being the A three fifty. Okay, hold on, Tim. I'm working through something here. Um, uh, go for it. Well, I can. I can. Uh, yeah. I can read it as well as you at the moment. Okay. So it's just one of uh, one of the things that's come out to add on there. It's just. Uh, it's interesting to me that they produced. This is a payware add on to a payware aircraft and I don't feel like you see that all that often uh, because usually payware aircrafts have their own custom sounds and certainly flight factor does yeah and I remember us talking about the a350 during kind of one of our middle podcasts where we were mm -hmm. you know maybe three four or something like that um, and I think it was a early release if i recall so um you know obviously where it is now it uh, i've never flown one of the flight factors and thought what i need right now is a sound pack yeah i've never had any beef with the sound but you know what can, can you humor me uh, do you have the article up on screen for them yeah i, I do yeah yeah would you mind clicking that YouTube link and running it up to about one minute and 18 seconds? And let's we'll see if we can, uh, let's, let's see if the sound's any good on this thing. I want to not do that only because some of the podcasts I watch mm -hmm. or listen to, they don't replay the audio because YouTube can hear the audio. Oh, and, good point. Uh, yeah. Oh, and that's, so, yep, yep. Thank the, you. Good catch, sir. Good yeah, catch. There's a thing. I, I don't know about it. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're not. But uh, No, that's probably a thing because uh, we used to fight the audio scrubbers on yeah, that uh, Our theme free, song or our intro song. Yes, with Microsoft stuff. And I became a real expert at writing back the nasty gram emails. And uh, it was not fun. So, yeah, let's skip that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I will take the next one, sir. As I'm copying and pasting oh, yes. it here that, for our viewers. That's got your name on it. No, nah, it does. Um, and uh, let's see. When that loads here, I will share. Simcoders has come out with the rep also for the uh, Just Flight. Piper P28R. That's interesting. I think in uh, Air Hauler it shows up as a U. But uh, anyway, I, I picked this up, the uh, Turbo Arrow, as part of our holiday thanks from the uh, FS Elite team. This was right. my uh, freebie, and love that plane. Uh, you and I were talking actually about it yesterday. Uh, never have I used rudder trim in a plane as much as this one. But yeah, the Simcoders uh, Reality Expansion Packs, I really don't have a bad thing to say about them in the two, three. What do I got? I've got them on three planes. Uh, 172 Baron and Thranda Kodiak. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just love them. I don't think for about $20 US, there's a way to take your um, 
your aircraft up that extra notch in realism. No, I, I, I only have one of theirs, and I really, really appreciate what it does. Well, Very now, nice. <clears throat> now we've come to our uh, our plug. Do you want me to do the plug? I mean, because we haven't plugged them enough yet. Oh, it's all right. Round three, in case they haven't been listening, do it. All right. Well, as usual, we suggest adding FS Elite to your browser favorites. Uh, you can see many of the articles we've shown here are actually from there. Um, check out the latest in their flight simulation news and releases. And don't forget to head over to their YouTube channel where it's got videos of us and a bunch of other cool people scattered all around the world making super awesome content for you guys. And something just popped up. Oh, yeah. So subscribe to them and uh, ring the bell for notifications. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. So um, in, in the news world here, I see we've got some rotate. And uh, this kind of excites me here. Screenshots for an MD-11 from rotate. And I, I feel a little out of the loop has this been in development just quietly and I just forgot about it? No, we, we've talked about it. Talked about it and I forgot? Oh. Yeah, because uh, I think in one of our podcasts, uh, you, you pulled up the link and it had the, um, what you call it, the uh, the gear animation, or not the oh. gear animation, but you're like, oh, the panels actually look like panels, not just a slick thing. Okay, so it was, okay. Yeah. I, I Actually, I remember, I remember saying that. Okay. Yeah. So... Oh. This uh, interior shot, I don't know what, what you're showing them at the moment, but there's some screenshots. Yeah, and we're looking at the cockpit work in progress right now. That's where I'm at, too. Um, I have the Rotate MD-80, which uh, people usually gush over. And I'm just always kind of ambivalent to it. I just uh, Maybe I just didn't spend enough time with it, but, um, you know... It's nice. It seems like it's got good systems depth, but I wasn't blown away by uh, the, their MD-80s uh, texturing. And, and looking at this uh, MD, I don't know, how, how are you feeling about the textures on this panel on their MD-11? Oh, well, like we've talked about before, sometimes some of these images are, are it's hard to discern how far along they are in the development of it. So, um, you know, that's kind of why they throw that work in progress tag out there. You know, it, it's likely going to be better, but if something's wrong, don't send us hate mail over it. I you mean, know, I'm just thinking, you know, texture, textures are textures. It's not like, um, you can't say that. Cause look at all the people that rag on the SSG, uh, oh. seven fours. Right. The, the, right. But what I'm saying here is um, we're used to people ragging on the SSG. Like that's that's a thing. Even if their stuff was perfect, that would probably continue to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But um, since Rotate has such like a really good reputation, I, I never see people complaining about Rotate. But I've just never been impressed with these textures and uh, this this one also kind of looks about the same. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. When I glance at it, I'm like, Man, I don't see anything I particularly want to complain about. I think I'm just not lost in it. Like, I'm very aware I'm looking at a simulated, animated cockpit. Right. Uh, I'm at no chance of posting this on the Instagram and fooling somebody into thinking it was real, which is something that happened with our Carinado uh, cabin shots. Oh, yeah, so, the Meridian. Uh, and the um, PC-12, the Pilatus. Oh, right, yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, we'll see. I, I would certainly get this because I bet system-wise it's going to be a blast, and it's an MD-11, so I can FedEx all over the place. But uh, Well, yeah, actually, this, those textures. this headlighted in one of our, um, one of our podcasts, man, because we said something about uh, giving love to three holes. <laughs> that's right yeah you remember uh, that now huh? I, I re uh, that intro was quite memorable it was it was uh, yeah i can't remember if uh, you laughing made it in the final cut but <clears throat> well uh, 
yeah, I have trouble holding it together. So let's, uh, you want to move kind of through here and then get to a little bit of BSing, or do we want to run a little over an hour today? I'm showing 45, oh. almost 45 yep. minutes. Yep, uh, I'm, I'm showing the same. Uh, I I don't see anything else there that we really absolutely need to hit if you want to just. The I&I &I builds, uh, A300, if you've got it, make sure you have, uh, make sure you've got it updated. They added a passenger configuration. They have passenger liveries also, and you have to sign into your uh, I and I builds account to get those. They're free downloads. Yeah, um, that was a little confusing. Yeah, um, Honeycomb Bravo. We have the shipment was delayed. I think they're caught up and started shipping again. I do want to show this shared flight link here as I copy and paste that for our viewers. Um, All right, so somebody. Um... I think it was on Facebook and one of our flight sim groups had been using it and was talking about it the other day. Yeah, um, I'm trying to move here. So they do have a beta sign up and this is, correct me if I'm wrong, this is FlyJ Sims thing, right? Is that right? Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, I know FlyJ Sim is working on one, but... Okay, okay. Uh, this looks like a standalone entity right. to me. Okay. Well, anyway, um, if you'd like to uh, do multi-crew applications and uh, figure out how to fly planes with other people who may or may not know how to fly planes, um, there you go. That's uh, sharedflight.com. Uh, again, beta sign up. I don't know what the criteria is for the beta. Uh, I don't know if they're accepting everybody or looking for certain people. To be fair, I'd like to be involved in it, but I don't have the time. Or n neither Tim or I have the time. So <laughs> I barely have time to boot X plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for for God's sakes, it's taken us three months to do a podcast, and these are the least amount of work out of everything we do. <laughs> um. That, oh, that that hurts a little yeah yeah i mean it's true though uh let's see fly by wires oh, uh, yeah I, I need to correct myself um the shared flight logo does appear to actually be uh f something that came out of fly j sim so this is the fly j sim thing it's just unusual that none of the fly j sim branding is on the shared flight uh, page. But. Well, and we mentioned this in a previous podcast somewhere. Uh, of course, the FlyJ products are going to be on it. Uh, the Zebo 737-800 is going to be one of them. Uh, there were numerous other planes that weren't uh, FlyJ Sim aircraft that were going to be available at launch. And I don't remember what podcast that was, Tim. Yeah, well, it's all right. If you're really curious, go to over to fselite.net, which I, I'm not plugging it just because we make things for them, because literally it is the best one-stop shop you're going to find for all the latest. And uh, if you don't find it there, you're probably not going to find it anywhere other than digging through forums and discords. Yeah, true, true. Um. Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, updates. I think they're doing about once a month. I think they hit North America this time. Uh, Japan was November, December. Uh, if you have the Airfoil Labs King Air, which I do, uh, version 1.4 is out. That brought uh, Vulcan compatibility. Go check that out. If you're on MFS, again, the Fly-By-Wire Simulations A32NX is a V0.4, which from what I've read, Tim, and maybe you've seen it as well, I believe that is supposed to be a an Airbus equivalent of the Zebo. So it's like they're modifying the included Airbus. Oh, okay. I had read something about this a while back when they were uh, starting. Yeah. And uh, if you look through their uh sort of change log features list um it's extensive and it, it's what we saw with the zebo too where sure. like when it starts out you know it's like uh, mowing the lawn when you have it in forever there's this huge wash 
of uh, primary features that are added back in and then uh, slows down and people can start getting cranky about fine details and you know yeah. it, it's going to be interesting to watch it develop um, that's good stuff good stuff and one final thing I'll hit there is the, and I'll show this on screen, if you have the Kalimata Concorde, uh, it has been updated to version 1.5. And Tim, this is a plane, I've bought it for our virtual airline now, with the intent of flying it. I think I have only done, and I'm embarrassed to say this, I think I've only done one or two flights in this plane, and well, since we got it, we, we got it back in early release which was like May, almost two years ago. How long have we right. been doing this channel? Two, in, two in years. A way, this, um, this video sort of launched the channel. I can tell you when this video came out, it was May. It was like two weeks before the ERJ, the X-Crafts, because we yeah, got in about, on that. It was May about two years ago. Like the 21st um, or something. It was like the third week. Uh, well, the reason I know it was it was actually the very beginning of May is because mm. uh, my son had been born and I was still home on a little bit of uh, daddy yeah. leave and the product was released. I woke up, bought it, uh, begged my wife for a day, locked myself in a room, made a video and we got about 20,000 views in 24 hours. Yeah. It was pretty memorable that... Uh, Concord helped to put uh, our channel on the map and get us a little bit of notoriety back when we were still real babies in the YouTube. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's my son's birthday, so uh, literal birthday. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we were sitting, what, like, uh, you know, like 300 subscribers back then or something. Yeah, I, that was back when, what, yeah. Okay, <laughs> because this opened the door for the X-Crafts ERJ series. Right, right. Exciting times. That's yeah. Weird. Those, those were uh, it was really cool to get in on that. Small milestones, but very meaningful. Good sure, stuff. sure. Well, let's see. I'm showing us at about 50 minutes, so we're we just gonna fly into the like what we've been up to, things we've done yeah, since yeah, we've been yeah, off yeah. air. Let's just hit that real quick because we have a, a few releases, and uh, if you've struggled through this long on a podcast, you definitely can handle these videos, and I recommend you do. So, Lee, what? Uh, well, what do you got on your side of the board there? First off, you couldn't have picked a worse time to throw it back over to me. I was off no, camera. I, I, I planned <clears throat> that. Yeah, well done. Okay, so I wasn't even listening. A am I reading what's on the uh, script here? I was just going to say, uh, you know, <laughs> tell us about the videos on your side of the board, oh. and then uh, yeah, we yeah. can back and forth it. So, uh, yeah, since we missed a few months, back on uh, December 20th, um, I released a video or, uh, on our channel. Um, it was making money in Air Hauler 2, uh, commodities trading. So the goal of that was uh, I'd been playing Air Hauler for, uh, since release. I think I bought it the week after it released on X-Plane, which I think was June, July. And I'd just been kind of grinding. And then it wasn't until about late November, early December, I started doing commodities. And man, the income just went, whoosh, and I just started buying stuff, and I was getting the aircraft and everything. So if you want to know how to make a lot of money quick, build your fleet, it's a little more time consuming than picking the available jobs, but uh, it's worth it because um, you can just you can bolster that fleet and get it really working for you. That's on our YouTube uh channel. Right, and, and if you have any doubts, this is because that kind of sounded like one of those come ons for like uh, how to make money in real estate with no money down, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, started telling me he's like, oh, you got to switch to commodities, and you know, at first I'm like, uh, but I, I know how to do the thing I know how to do, and uh, I went from having an, an account on my V uh, my air hauler airline of about seven million dollars to just shy of a billion dollars it was like no joke how quickly i was able to generate massive income and then buy massive aircraft and then generate even more income more quickly i mean exponential growth it really was fascinating 
Well, and we and we talk about that in the VA chat too um, for the Flight Brothers Virtual Airline in Air Hauler. So if you Other join us, to join. yeah, yeah, we, we share information on like where the commodities are, and you know if you've got a plane over here, this is a good commodity to run between here and here to get you some some Bam. money. Fort Lauderdale executive to Tampa perfumes, hundred and twenty dollar per unit profit. That's true. If you fly. Nailed. You, you can do Opalaka to uh, Tampa for I think what one thirteen per unit. Mm, I haven't tried that one. It's right. a it's a little lower than FXE, but uh, you can fit wide bodies into Opalaka. See, and this all relates. You can go over to Instagram and see me squeaking forty seven four hundred into Fort Lauderdale Executive because Air Hauler Two said no. That right. runway is too small for the AI pilots. And I said, challenge accepted. I said, oh. <laughs> well, now it has to happen. Right. So I strategically used every inch of runway and um, I, I magically held it off. And I say magic in the sense of accidentally uh, held off the touchdown until um, exactly where I should have touched down. Yeah. But by all accounts, if you watched it on the Instagram, like it's hard to believe I wasn't actually touching the grass. The only way you can tell I'm not touching the grass is the gear doesn't compress until we're on the uh, pavement. So it was, yeah, I, I was impressed when I watched that replay. I was too. And if you're a Redditor, it's going to be up there in a couple of days. I've already got it uh, locked and loaded. So I don't know when I'll release it. We, we did the Boeing 777 pushback today. Um, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we oh. did, and, and our last video for uh, FS Elite was the Skyline Simulations Gibraltar. That's over on their channel. If you're interested in Gibraltar, that scenery pack, uh, go check that out over there. That was the last one we did before we we took a leave of absence because um, our, our work lives and our home lives, with everything going on, was just too much, and we're like we felt bad uh it, it took us a lot longer to make that video than it should have but uh s such was the way things were going at the time well so uh you know with that in mind we, I, I have squeaked out a few videos i mean mm -hmm. there was a time when we were producing uh, weekly content and now that <laughs> it seems yeah. nearly unbelievable, but yeah. uh, hopefully, as, as as the world calms back, well, whatever the quality the world improved. Gets calmed, yeah, the, yeah the and this is improved. true. We are actually producing way higher quality content. That's a good point. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, I did manage to put out a video in November and again in January, and they're both tail draggers. Hmm. So if you're interested in so is that seven forty seven into FXE. <laughs> Very nearly, very nearly. <laughs> so that's why there's tail strike protection. Uh, so uh, I did a video in November on the Lockheed Lodestar. That's an Oli XM product. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, Lee and I have been into a uh, series of paperback novels. Um, mm -hmm. Who's the author of those? Uh, you're talking about W.B. Griffin? Griffin, the, Griffin novels. The Honor Bound and series? Right, Griffin really writes fantastic, uh, fantastic stories. Great storyteller, and uh, the stories are not so much about the the destination, but the journey. Um, I mean that figuratively. Yeah. But uh, the, the books are very much uh, military fantasy uh, and uh, historical fiction, and so he includes a lot of historical firearms and historical vehicles and historical people and dun dun dun. Aircraft. In our wheelhouse historical aircraft sure. so i was actually reading a novel that included the lodestar and our main character in the novel uh was supposed to be receiving covertly a uh, a lockheed um no it wasn't a lockheed it's a beach what was, what's the beach oh, the beach 18 yeah beach Expedite. 18 yeah uh, whatever the military code is, it's called an expediter in the military one. And uh, instead, they deliver him a Lockheed Lodestar, which is uh, functionally an airliner of the time as opposed to a twin, <laughs> a small twin. So uh, 
it was it was really a lot of fun to mess around with and uh i i'm really enjoying it i've got a video on the channel obviously that's why we're talking about it so check it out can, can i jab you on that too yeah hit it because you know shortly after i moved into this house which was about what four years ago or well five years ago i think that's we're right. in here about a year when you gave me honor bound mm. and here it comes yep yeah, and, and i read that and then I continued to read the entire series. And I think I've been done with that series. <laughs> well, let's just say I've completed the Honor Bound series. And then I've completed the Clandestine series. And I'm now in the middle of the uh, something, something of War series. I'm about halfway through that one. And meanwhile, I'm like, look, squirrel, and I'm gone. Yeah, I, I, You're on like I read the one second book, book, I tell right? Lee it's good, and he reads the whole freaking series. <laughs> yeah. I'm still on novel two, chapter two. <laughs> yep. Anyway, good th th thanks I for getting me on that series, though, and the author in general, because, you know, that led me to the next one and the next series, so. No, it, it is good, actually. I'm about ready... I would have started the third novel, but I am actually attempting not to flander on my book so much and to uh, actually finish some. So we'll uh, we'll keep you posted. But uh, also still in the uh, old classic military aircraft World War II vintage, I did a video that it's actually a request from the Lockheed Lodestar comment thread. Um, oh, yeah. Somebody talking about tail draggers and said, have you done a video on the Stinson? I was like, the Stinson? That's one of those default aircraft. And to be honest, when he asked it, I think I had loaded up the Stinson once and flown it never. So it got me curious. I looked online on YouTube for Stinson tutorials. And if you've got nothing better to do and want to entertain yourself, maybe grab a beverage, some popcorn, and uh, Google explain Stinson and save my video for last. Is it a crash Be test? Um. Well, the one I sent you, Lee, the, the young guy who didn't know the name of any of the uh, instruments. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one was, yeah. I mean, he did everything other than say, here's the speedometer. <laughs> it's like, right. It was, I mean, you know, it is what it is. I appreciate the guy did it. Um, sure. I think he had a channel that had multiple directions. It wasn't just a flight sim channel, so I'll give him some grace. But what was interesting is that the flight sim community had completely ignored default Stinson and I was like well now I have to make it yeah. so uh, so I made you a tutorial on the Stinson and it's fun it's squirrely it's gonna annoy you for the first couple minutes but then once you once you get the hang of it it's kind of gratifying it's like you've accomplished something uh, once you figure out how to handle it there's no AP so it's all it's all you it's all real flying hundred percent stick and rudder and I don't know if you looked at the comment thread on uh, Reddit, but we had somebody talking about the handling of it. And I was just like, pin the elevator back and go slow on the ground. And, you know, it handles like a tail dragger. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's in a weird way. It might be the most formidably challenging default aircraft in X-Plane. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it just seems like across the board, everybody has put it into the trees crashed it off the runway so if you've never tried it just just entertain yourself get that stinson out give it a spin and once you crash it go watch my video and i'll tell you how not to yeah 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 all right well that is all i've got on my videos because i haven't been making many <laughs> all right well you know i would like to hit up the uh the little merry christmas there because we've been kind of we're a couple minutes over where we normally are, but I mean... Yeah, Christmas uh, in January, do it. Yeah, Christmas in January. Uh, we would like, we the Flight Brothers would like to say thanks to FS Elite, of course, for the, uh, uh, well, FS Elite, uh, Honeycomb, Orbex, and Sim Market for uh, our Christmas presents uh, through you guys. Uh, I know it's a thanks for, for the work we do over there, but it really is a great team. Tim and I have been with them for right around a year now uh, with FS Elite, and it's just, they're all av geeks just like we are. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's a great team. 
You know, they've talked to us on the side about stuff, answered questions, provide feedback. They've made us better. And, you know, hopefully, well, I don't, I don't think we've made them better. But, uh, you know, hopefully we bring something to FS Elite. But that was really cool to get the, uh, the email or uh, whatever it was there from, from Cal yeah. saying, hey, guys, uh, you know, thanks for all the hard work and, and take a look at this. So thanks, Cal, FS Elite team. Appreciate that. And to you, the viewers, you benefit because all the free stuff we get eventually turns into channel content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, some of it's hard-earned money, some of it's uh, not. But uh, like this webcam, you know, everybody's staring at me today. That's, uh, you know, that's... We're all thinking, we're, how's we're, it shaved, buddy? Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I haven't done that in about a week, so I need to, need to do it. I wasn't planning on being camera, uh, being on camera right now. And actually, until you text me like three hours, two hours before we started, I was like, hmm, I wasn't even thinking of a podcast today. See, it just cracks me up because, um, well, I suspect some or many of our viewers, uh, if you view a lot, may have already seen in comments or figured out that uh, my occupation is a teacher. And this being the year 2021, and with all the COVID uh, shenanigans, I am working online. So I actually spend about seven hours a day uh, live streaming my face. So it's <laughs> so I'm not very sympathetic to Lee's position. Or maybe I am sympathetic, but I uh, I know the drill. <laughs> really, what he did is he used me as a guinea pig so we could buy this, find out if it was any good, and then he could turn around and buy it. So. So far, it seems to be nice. At if least, he, like, should right. we do this? And I go, yeah, I think you should buy it first. Let me know how it goes. Yeah, right. And then he's like, send me the actual page link to the thing you bought. I'm like, hmm, a little suspect. Just beta test it for me. <clears throat> right, right. Well, um, right. I, I guess we'll move. Uh, I've got a video in the works. It's on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I have an idea for the next video I'm going to do, which is likely going to be on x -Plane. It'll be uh, an overlook slash review of an aircraft. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've, we've picked a few things up recently, like we were saying with the, with the FS Elite team and uh, bringing us some Christmas stuff. So maybe we'll incorporate those in videos either here or on FS Elite. Who knows? Make sure you uh, like and subscribe to both of us. And I would like to plug again, and if you guys are interested in Air Hauler, check out some of our videos. Check out other videos on the internet, not necessarily ours, uh, but look around. And uh, if you're looking for like an economy management flying system uh, to give you maybe a little bit more renewed purpose in, in hopping in your, your flight simulator, take a look at Air Hauler because... Uh, it's everything and more than I thought it was going to be. Right. And, and, uh, you know, random last tidbit from me, and then I'm, I'm ready to, uh, to shut this down if you are. But, yeah. uh, but to our viewers, please comment, not just because it helps our metrics, and that's always fantastic on the YouTube, but uh, th this has been a long, a long haul around the world for everybody, uh, not in the aviation sense, in the uh, – in the COVID sense, and uh, it's very, been very isolating for a lot of the world. And we really do enjoy your comments and your commentary, and we try and reply, and uh, we try and be sincere about it. So, you know, if you're hanging out flying your planes with nothing else to do, get on there. Shoot us a comment. Tell us something about your flight. Uh, ask us a question about it. We'll get back to you. Converse, chat. Uh, you know, sure. we really believe in the flight sim community, and that's a lot of why we're doing this. And even though we're spread out all over the world, it's uh, it's reassuring that you know the world feels a little smaller to me when we get uh, these these comments from other countries, or when I get to uh, put my reply into Google Translate to send it back to somebody. You know, uh, yeah. it, it really shows. You know, it, you know, you feel a little bit of the humanity that um, somewhere deep in our genetic code, we all love airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, I dig that, and and even our uh, 
as Lee was plugging our air hauler VA. Uh, our other pilot is not even American. It, uh, shame on me for forgetting. Is he in Slovakia? Uh, well, I don't know if he's not in America, but he's of, I, I believe, Slovakian descent. Mm, I, I know it was, I, e I know it was Eastern European. Comments, I'm thinking his time zone is way off from ours. I don't okay. think he's here. Yeah. He just has uh, fantastically good English, so. Yeah, yeah. That's off. Well, and even when he popped in there, he's like, hey, guys, I don't know what I'm doing, but blah, blah, blah. And we're like, dude, we'll, we'll, we'll help you along. You know, if you learn something that we don't know, tell us. So, uh, like Tim's saying, it's it's all about the community. What, irrespective of what simulator you're on, irrespective of how you grew up or, or what your computer is, whether it's a $500 laptop that's on its last leg or a $5,000 top-of-the-line machine now, you know, it's, it's about the community. We're all trying to do the same thing and... Uh, between all of our social media uh, accounts, um, it's really cool to see and hear what other people are doing, what they're flying. Um, maybe they encountered icing or they did their first, uh, you know, quarter mile visibility, you know, approach on an ILS. And you know, it's just, those are all kind of like, and it's, it's fake, right? We're all in this little fake world, but back when we did those things it, it it's pretty cool and then to take your mind and shift that to what the real world guys guys and gals are doing you know you got 180 200 300 passengers behind you and uh your lives are depending on that expertise up front you know and it's uh it's, it's really something to be appreciated and it's especially very, shipping very ready. yeah and shipping vaccines around right now you know i mean you probably got packages delayed from you know amazon or best buy or whatever i mean my camera got delayed a, a day you know probably because they're moving that stuff so uh the world never ceases the, the world of transportation especially all right well uh with that we are we are slightly over time so even though we're out of time, as you can tell, we never ever going to run out of things to talk about. So we're just going to have to pull the plug there. So thank you for joining us for this very belated podcast number seven. And we hope to see you in about a month. <laughs> we hope for podcast number eight. So until next time, I'm Tim. And I'm Lee. Remember, plan the flight. And fly the plan. If you enjoy this content, consider buying us a coffee to show your support. Visit us at buymeacoffee.com slash flightbrosft or search for us from the menu if you'd like to contribute. A link will be provided in the video description below.